in this segment we will look into hibernate persistent context and the session basically we'll look into the concept and uh, we'll try to build a mental model so that will help you in understanding these concepts and to work with these concepts in a much easier way so let's start with let's assume that we have got our database here so this is our database and uh, so let's just say this is our db and we have got let's say a user table and it has got two pro uh, columns id and name and let's just for the representation purpose let's assume that this is our area where the java runtime is working basically the hibernate runtime so you know that whenever the program starts the hibernate based program it first boots up a session factory so let's say that this is our session factory so what it contains it basically contains the mapping between the definition of the user class and the table so let's say that somewhere our definition of user class is just for understanding purpose our user class definition is sitting here so what this contains is the metadata of mapping okay so this mapping knows that how to map this table into this class and it can create objects for you now let's come to how we interact with uh, hibernate so what we do is that we normally say session s is equal to sf dot get session okay so whenever you do what session factory will return you is let's assume that this is our session object now it has written this session object it has got a handle to session factory and it also creates a memory area which we can call as persistent context persistent context okay so then the next statement what we do is that we say basically tx is equal to s dot begin transaction so the transaction is created so what session does is that it basically goes to the database and marks our transaction boundary so let's say that this is our transaction boundary where the transaction is starts now let's fetch a object so what we will say that we will say user u is equal to s dot get user dot class and let's fetch the object with id 1 okay 1 l so the, uh, let's assume that's a long so now and let's assume that the record exists uh, if the record doesn't exist we'll throw an exception but for this purpose we'll assume that the record exists so what happens is that now session will basically create an jdbc query uh, of uh, basically select star from user where id is equal to l issue this query to the database so here the query is issued then it gets the object the, uh, basically it gets the record it looks into session factory it knows the mapping it it looks into the class populates this whatever the different column into this class and basically create an object and keep that object in your persistent context and let's call it u so now our user object is created here okay now you go and change the name say u dot set name let's put ekagra okay so what sh so now this object handle you have got in your whatever wherever you are working with in your apis in your area of the code and you say set name so the name is gone and changed here okay so now it contains the name ekagra if i try to fetch it again let's say if i say user u2 is equal to s dot get 
user dot class and again pass one l. Now session knows that this u ob uh, object already exists here. Okay, so 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 better way to represent is probably you have got the handle of u here. It points to this object, and then you get another object u two. But when the session sees that whether it has got this object of 1L inside the persistent contract, it will find it. It will not issue another query, but it will just return the handle of that one so that your U2 is also now pointing to this guy. Okay. Now you go and say TX dot commit. Now what happens is that now Hibernate will do a dirty checking. So for dirty checking, what it has done is that whenever you had run this query, it has kept another object of the same record and it contains the original state. This is the original and this is the changed state. Now, whenever you say tex dot commit, Hibernate will go and do a dirty checking. So it will take this object, compare with the original object. And in this case, it will figure out that the state has changed. It will issue an update query. And then you basically commit the transaction. So here your transaction is now done. And then when you say s dot close this object all the references are basically cleaned up and this object is ready for garbage collection hopefully this will help you out in understanding the concepts of hibernate much better